Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> William Ruto has finally named the 49th principles, 49 principal secretaries that will be in charge of different state departments across the government ministries. It is true that I need to mention that the principal secretaries are actually the engine behind the legacy and the projects that are undertaken under by any government. The ministers are normally on policy and they are the people that they are the image of every uh, ministry. But the real engine is actually the principal secretaries. So after people are even wondering, uh, I saw someone asking in Twitter, why 49 and we have, uh, I think, 20 ministries, 22. Um, it's 49 because different ministries have more than one department. So, for example, president can always uh, restructure uh, the way he wants. The, the number of principal secretaries that William Ruto is having is different with the ones that maybe the number that former president Uhuru Kenyatta had. And it can even be different with Mwai Kibaki. So what exactly is happening is that there are ministries that have more departments and others just have one. Like that of defense only have one state department. And so the principal secretaries will be in charge of these state departments under the CS, uh, the respective CS. You have seen the list, and even if you have not, I'll try to just uh, make um, some observations so far, because I've also been looking at how Kenyans are reacting on social media. And in your own assessment, what do you think? <laughs> I've looked at that, and I agree with the analysts that have opined that the notion that we are a united country, that we are uniting this country together is far from a reality. It's not still realistic. That's what uh, that list have actually shown. In terms of gender balance, the president, William Bruto, has picked 10 out of the 49. This is a departure from what... Um, this is a departure from what was promised in the women charter where they will get 50%. And of course, when the list for the cabinet came out, people were expecting that because it was not fully, it was not achieved at the CS lot, maybe it was going to be addressed at the PS lot. And that has fallen short of it. If you ask me in terms of gender balance, no, he has performed poorly. In fact, out of 10, you can give him four now. Regional balance, this is also keen, and this is where I think Kenyans are also <laughs> uh, really uh, um, criticizing the president on. In terms of regional balance, um, I have seen, I think the Kalenjin nation are around 13, the ones that are in that list. Of course, between 10 to 13, of course, not, not, not all maybe are from origin from that place. I've seen on my good friend, Olaf Twa, who fight for MPs, the other side of Goris. I've also been uh, given a job somewhere, the PS. Now, the regional balance has failed. Ayub Savola is saying that Luya Nation only have two. That is Professor Edwin Kisiangani, and I think with another person, I'm yet to know. And Luya Nation also might have two. If I'm not wrong, <laughs> seen Raymond Molo and someone Kombuda. If I'm not wrong, maybe two. Some at 13. Um, Gema have a bigger chunk, and of course, with the other areas. So, in terms of that, they failed. But I need to mention something, and it's not like I'm defending Ruto. What Ruto did is the members, the Kalenjin a nation who are actually civil servants who are in government, majority of them have been retained. Those who stuck with, decided to stick with the president, with William Ruto, have been retained in their respective positions. Those who did not have been shown the door alongside Uhuru Kenyatta's appointees. 
in terms of meritocracy, meritocracy is people based on merit or rather on competence. I may not look, uh, this may be to be harsh to judge him harshly on this, but maybe around 60%. Now, the other observation that I've also made is from uh, Robert Lai saying that Veronica Mwenindova was working, was a CIA operative in Kenya, working from the U.S. Embassy. So he seems to have been plucked from that end. Now, Boya Monu, IBC commissioner, uh, Mary Chebukati, the wife to uh, Wafula Chebukati, Nanok, not Nanok, um, Chris Somalwa, who was also, where well, Chris Somalo, who was um, vying for governor's seat in Transoia and really campaigned for William Ruto, uh, Malana was Shirley, and even Purity Ngirishi, and I think, in fact, I'll have to look at Purity Ngirishi, and there is also Sankok have not made, in the, have not made the cut in that list. Mary Chebukati, the wife of Lord Chebukati, was in the Ministry of Lands, he was shortlisted. Boya Molu is going to the tenure at IBC is ending probably next month, not probably uh, in January. And Chris Malwa, there's a and Malala, and and honestly, if you look at Ololtua, my good friend Ololtua, and Malala and Washali, not even Washali, Malala. Malala was an engine behind Kenya Kwanza, to say the truth. He was an engine behind Musalem Davadi joining Kenya Kwanza. If maybe what we were served with is was not just camera gimmicks. If the notion by Ayub Savola that the leaders in that PS list are less than um, 12, then the 30% pledge Salem Davadi was given at the power sharing deal is not affected. It's possible. You know, there is one thing to promise. There is one thing to want government and work for government there is one thing to be in government and that that's also another observation we can make from there that that 30 percent that probably uh Ni was promised uh that uh that uh, mudavadi and Otangula were promised was not it and so it has not been affected purity english missing from that list um is, is, has really caught the attention. Remember, Puritan Grishi was at one point forced to drop, um, I, I, she was convinced to drop the lawsuit against uh, the um, uh, against Anway Guru with the report emerging that she was to be handed a lucrative maybe PS post in government, but that has not been received. That has not been seen. And, and I think on two people, I want to just defend them. This is Malala and Grishi. Grishi was the person that took William Ruto to Kirinyaga. Actually, she was the initial I. She's the person that took UDA to Kirinyaga. And Malala is the person that effected Kenya Kwanza at the ANC deal to come to Kenya Kwanza. That was Malala and Sakaja. Sakaja got the governor seat in Nairobi, but Malala is still dangling somewhere. So he's not been put. But again, Ruto was keen to reduce the number of politicians that are getting into these offices. Because I think at the cabinet, he was a bit criticized on that. Now, I have taken keen interest on what, guys, what was in the title, that President William Ruto planted. I have looked at these three. I just want to single out these three. And they seems to me that they are proxies or spies of William Ruto in different ministries they've gone to. Number one is Nixon Korea. Nixon Korea is handing to the Lance docket which was, um, the, the CS initially was Farida Karone. And you know, in William in, in, in Uhuru Kenyatta's regime, the lands was under. When you were legal, the lands ilikuwa Uhuru, William Ruto. So there is a lot of interest in that area. If, if you're keen, the more affordable housing projects touches on land. In fact, land is one of the biggest thing that uh, has also been a point born of contention. Even my previous video, I analyzed in this video, over the NCBA, um, the NCBA and National Citizens and Produce Board scandal, it was touching on land. So Nixon Corey is there. And you remember William Ruto have, um, in the previous um, regime, have really had challenges of him being pushed in the wall on matters corruption and they were touching on land. Now, these two people, 
have been planted by William Ruto in these ministries. Julius Corel is heading to in the office of Rigadi Geshako. Now, Julius Corel was formerly in the Ministry of Sports in Youth Affairs. <laughs> but he is an athlete, former, is a former athlete. And he's headed there. This is, he's from Nandi. And he's a very close ally. And he's one of the people, because he was in government and he's been retained, that tells you that he had a good relationship with President Ruto. So that's why he's been retained. And he seems to be an eye of William Ruto in the office of Rigeti Geshagwa. Number two, and this is also very uh, very keen for me, is Aurelia Rono. Aurelia Rono is going to be in charge of State Department of Parliamentary Affairs in the office of the Chief Cabinet Secretary, under Salem Davadi. Now, she is an academia. Uh, university. She was nominated first as an MCA in Bomet and was working as a lecturer in Bomet University and even wanted to vie for Senate in Bomet but she did not make in the ballot. So she, she, to me, of course, that appointment is a hand-picked appointment. It's one that has just been picked. And from what you see there, um, these are people that if you look at, if you look at this technically, Rono and Rono, Julius, Julius Correr and Aurelia Rono are from William Ruto's wing. And they have been planted in those offices. What what are you seeing? What are you seeing here is that there is going to be lack of synergy. There is going to be, of course, synergy in the workflow because professional synergy is always there. People work in the offices, and of course, things have to be delivered. But in terms of the goodwill synergy, they may be answerable even to the big man. And this is very technical, and I want to. This is technically a political game. Look at what happened in the office of D.P. Ruto in, uh, in the second term. You know, people who worked under him, uh, including my good friend S. Okanyuri, who has been nominated to the Senate now, people worked under him were smoothly absorbed in the political campaign trail. They campaigned for William Ruto, including uh, Emmanuel Talam. And these people, they were part of his machinery. Now, if you look at this, if today Mdavadi or Gashako is to start alternative politics or start politics, that office will not work with him on that rally, on that road. If you look at uh, Korir and Ro, Arulia Rono, they may not go with Mdavadi on a political trail. I, in fact, I'm going to look at it. I'm waiting to look at that. Ruto really crafted a campaign team around him, even from the people that were around him even from the people that worked in the office of the deputy president. So that will not work from the Vardian regarding Ashago. And technically, that's what they seems to be doing. Now, with this, I want to point out something, that William Bruto will comfortably control regarding Ashago in the Vardian's office. Comfortably. There is nothing that will be done there that will be high secret. In fact, the secrecy level in those offices has, will go down. Because uh, Ruto already have someone. They are, they are William Ruto's eyes in those offices. And of course, you can challenge me on this. Now, Mudavadi and Gabi Geshagwa, I, I, I tend to feel like they did not have, they did not make a choice for this uh, PS, uh, permanent secretary to, uh, to be brought in their offices. I don't think it was their choice. Because in the office of deputy president and that of Chief Office of Prime Cabinet Secretary, you know, William Ruto have uh, have just decided to de dispatch from uh, to, de to, to depart from a president and do this thing. If Mdavad was to be given a chance to choose, I don't think it would be these people. He would have at least gone for some near guy or even someone who was friendly to him, but he would not directly pick someone from William Ruto's place. I, I, I tend to believe this. I don't know whether I'm just looking at it. I'm thinking of this deeper. But if Mdavadi and Gashago are given chance that the PS is from you, someone is asking, did Ruto pick? Let's not bury our heads in the sand. Um, this is the truth. These positions are given politically. The interviews are done, but 
the other parameters that are used to pick each to be put in different ministries are just beyond answering the interview questions well and passing the interview. There are many people who passed the interview and why should we say they passed the interview but they could not make it here simply because of this other behind the scene political factors. So it's 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 indeed true that they did not look at the uh, getting a shake with chief of staff. <laughs> just go and do a research who has been despite there as a chief of staff. You you will look at it and, and find out that some something is not disconnecting now. Something someone like Aurelio has been despite from the body's office is a green horn or matters public service. She was a lecturer and he was a nominated MC. So imagine someone who was only worked as a nominated MC is now being taken to the office of um, Salim Dawadi. You know, what do you think? This person is very loyal and is just making an entry. Something that you need to do to take now. Ruto's allies in Rigadi and um, uh, and Dawadi's office have been that strategy has been employed to tactically manage the cold war between Davadi and Gachagua and because Ruto will simply be at control and he has known very well that there is already a cold war between Ruto uh, between Davadi and Gachagua i know many people are saying that analysts are creating it but if you follow politics of this country and also have the privilege of following deep politics you understand that something is not really going right now maybe they will track perception of Ruto office of the presidency in these other offices even though this might look bad and when you have your people in government offices uh you seem to be very comfortable to you know they like your spies that's what more used to do by then days what happened to the equity equalization the mainstreaming of government agenda because that's what it and the risk that this country is making and and I'm saying this making this passion appeal the risk the political class is making is to undo the gains of handshake you know handshake created everyone you know who kenyatta never sacked anyone because he differed with william ruto that's the truth if you check do your research well you will realize that who never made really need to leave people leave government because he was not in good terms with the ruto and now people who worked to the huru who and again who then brought everyone on the fold and if you check uru's cabinet and really ruto's cabinet ever in terms of the ps there's a big difference uru got something even though not to 100% but he was way ahead of william ruto now this kind of perception that is coming that it's our time to eat and so it's our government is what will return this government to make other people other regions feel like they are left out and in the next general election we may be back to factory settings where a perception is created that unless i am in government if i'm not in government if the president is not from my tribe i don't have a stake i think we need to undo that it starts from these powerful positions as ps and cabinet is it not too late to talk about what i'm saying that's my bond and kindly subscribe to my channel to our channel